Well, I have three children, and they are teaching me. I feel like they're um, reflecting with me constantly, like I've let go of more of the physical, you need to be this and do this, the parenting, super strong, but I try to see, like, what do you want? Like, let's see what you want. And in doing so, I do that also with myself, I found, which has been... Here's something important, though. You're looking at your children, any one of them, and you're saying, what do you want? Which seems like the path to clarity for you. But we want you to consider something. If they're not under the influence of their inner being, when they tell you what they want, it's wonky anyway. Right. You see what we're getting at? Right. So before you ask someone what they want, you want to know what they're under the influence of. And if they're not in a good mood, that's not a good time to ask that question. Most people ask that question when they see someone in some kind of distress, which says, what do you want that I might do that will compensate for your lack of alignment with your own inner being? How can I take the place of your true connection with source? How can I promote your distorted view of the universe right here and now? <laughs> How can I cause you to replace your connection with your inner being with your connection with me in order to satisfy my not being under the influence of source? That was heavy. That is heavy. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm just feeling like, yeah. I, you got it though, didn't you? I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to screw it up. You can't, you can't. Because first of all, it's not your job to figure out what they want. And it's not your job to supply what they want. And it's not your job to fix what they want if they don't know what they want. And it's not your job to lead them toward what they want when they're in a vibration that won't let them go to what they want. It's your job to observe whatever feels best to you. And often it's them and often it isn't. You just got to know by the way you feel how much attention to give. This is a big question. Let us give you the overarching question that is about this. People often want to know. Abraham you cause confusion in me they say because you talk about being a deliberate creator and then you talk about releasing my thought and watching the movie what do you want from me and we say we want you to let life come to you as it will and manage it as best you can as it comes sometimes you're in step one launch the rocket sometimes you're in step three acknowledge that and do it on purpose and when you become that master that step four master of knowing that you're in alignment that's when you want to step on the gas that's when you want to do your parenting that's when you want the words to flow out of your mouth when you're tuned in tapped in turned on whether they are or not and you're feeling the impulse to speak something as it's coming from your non-physical perspective speak it but never try to straighten them out when you are in a bad mood don't make their behavior be the solution to your problem any more than we don't want you to make you the solution to their problem be true to who you really are and let flow from you that truth what you want your kids to say about their mom anymore I can't tell if she's mad at us or not she just seems like she's in a good mood all the time she just seems happy no matter what she just seems glad to see me no matter what it's like I please her it's like she loves me so much that she can't see the bad things I'm doing they might not ever say that out loud but they will feel it my mom loves me anyway it's like my mom just loves me can you imagine all the pressure that that takes off somebody because most everybody is just knee-jerk reacting to somebody who didn't love them oh you don't love me well then I think I'll just kill myself that's the ultimate of that right yeah right I'm finding sometimes in my reactions especially with my kids because I'm with them often that my first reaction is the is fear based yeah but we want to ask you your first reaction after a whole lot of other reactions in other words your first reaction was you woke up did you meditate your next reaction was did you segment and tend going into this segment you did a whole lot of things which caused you to be under the influence of source or under the influence of something else before you had that reaction do you have any shock absorbers or are you pounding on the metal of your car are you feeling every single bump yeah sometimes I find that I'm pounding and feeling every bump well then take a nap yeah because no good's going to come from any conversation that you have when you feel like that. They can't be good enough 
they could stand on their head and keep every rule that you've ever offered to them and it still won't be enough when you've got no shock absorbers because much of the time they're not the reason for you being out on the raw and ragged edge anyway they're just there to enhance the feeling of being out there on the raw and ragged edge but they're not the reason for it most people the thing they blame on their children is more about their concern over money than anything else because children are eager to have everything and if you've got money shortage consciousness going on which not a bad thing in other words it's logical that you might and they want something and you see yourself as the vortex that they believe through which all their stuff will come <laughs> then you want to say stop wanting stop summoning through my clogged vortex <laughs> stop asking for things that I can't right now provide let me get my own oxygen mask on first and then I'll help you with yours right that's actually an analogy I told a friend the other day was that this we know, is, we took this it from is you. me <laughs> we've never offered it before but it was really good thank you thank you so so just um, with the segment intending because you just mentioned that I so what does the segment intending do the segment intending so you got to be feeling pretty good and then segment intend just causes more specific momentum about more specific subjects which is more delicious the more general you are the more likely you are to have less resistance but it also can be kind of boring when you're listening to the air conditioner you have no resistance but we don't want you to go what are you doing listening to the air conditioning what did you do yesterday I listened to the air conditioning <laughs> what are you going to do tomorrow I'm going to listen to the air conditioning well don't you have any hopes and dreams no I just listen to the air conditioning that's just a means too but when you're tuned in tapped in turned on oh to get to watch the movie play of all of the things that you've incrementally put into your vortex and you know what you've been putting those ingredients into your vortex one by one by one by one by one and you can't even comprehend what they are when they mix together but your inner being can there is so much more potential for satisfaction than you could even imagine because you could put 10 intentions in and when they mix together exponentially there are unlimited numbers of combinations and things that come together to surprise and delight you you're just gonna love how cooperative your children become to their own vortex when you are cooperative to your vortex well, I did, I did experience that this week at yes. their school. I, yep. I was leaving their school. I had the intention to just be open and receiving. And I had an impulse to pull over to the side road. Um, There's like a wildlife sanctuary there. And a voice or some impulse said to me, like, get out of the truck and go sit on the fence. So I went and sat on the fence. And it was a beautiful day, and I love looking at trees, the beautiful green color against the blue. And I did so, and um, just I like, had probably, I'm not sure how long, but it was amazing. And then a thought came in my brain that was, I wonder why, and right when I said, I wonder why, a great blue heron landed in the wildlife sanctuary. And my kids and I had seen one earlier in the year, and I was like, wow, this is okay. Like, like a result was happening right upon the moment of asking. This is the reason that I felt this impulse to stop here because my inner being knows how I care about that. It was pretty active in my vibration because we'd just been talking about it. And there it was ready to hatch. And because I was tuned in, tapped in, turned on, I felt the impulse. And because I wanted to be open and was more interested in my pleasure than my responsibility, because I actually should have stayed in the truck and gone and done the things I was supposed to be doing. But instead I followed that impulse and then the reason that I was inspired to be there was shown to me to give me more and more confidence and trust in following those impulses into unknown places for unknown reasons so let's talk about what you did know because you described it really well and anybody listening back you'll hear this you didn't know what or where or when or who what you said again and again was and it was so beautiful and it felt so good you were completely allowing yourself to be guided because you trust that feeling of pleasure 
and then the pleasure just expanded into more and more and more and more now consider this what if you are receiving more and more and more and more and so you know you're there because you've done this often enough that you know when you're tuned in Esther calls it ah oh, the magic's happening and she knows it's not magic she likes those words oh, the magic's happening that's when you can apply your thought to something about something if you want to that's when you might say I wish this for all the people in the world I desire more of these moments for myself or I love it when my children have these experiences where they're able to acknowledge the law of attraction Esther was with grandson Luke not too long ago and they had stopped at an ice cream place and they went through the drive through window to get their cones and then Luke suggested why don't we just sit and eat them in the car so that you'll be more comfortable grandmother that nice Esther loved that so much because she doesn't really like licking it off her arm but was willing <laughs> so they parked facing the freeway and they're just sitting there enjoying each other but mostly the ice cream and Esther said I love cars and Luke said I do too and Esther said oh I like to think about all the variety of them Luke said I do too and Esther said one time I knew a man who lived in San Diego and he moved to Tucson and he was working at a car dealership and he said that each state or each city has access to different colors of cars in other words in one state it's more of a predominance of this because it's what people buy and in other states it's more a predominance of that because it's what people buy Esther said I wonder what the predominance is here and Luke said well let's see and so he starts looking and it's clear the predominance of cars they were mostly white or they were mostly silver occasionally there were black ones but never a green one hardly a blue one occasionally a red one and so they sort of got fascinated as they were watching the cars and then Esther said notice how well kept they all are they all seem like they're in good repair and Luke said I noticed that except for that one big old van that went by Esther said yeah I saw that too so they're just watching and then Luke said something about the beautiful cars he likes to see and the rare ones that are beautiful are so fun to see and Esther said yeah like what and Luke began naming some of his he knows cars that Esther doesn't recognize she knows the name of them but might not recognize them and so they just had fun and they were not there more than 10 minutes at the very most and when they pulled out of the parking lot they could go onto the freeway but to get left for their next turn takes a little fancy driving and Esther likes the path of least resistance and so Esther said I feel like I'd like to go this way through the parking lot and out and Luke said I think that's better too he drives with her he's going to be a very good driver because he always is thinking about who is driving and what they're doing and then they came around a corner and Esther is looking ahead into the traffic planning her turn and Luke says look grandma and here is a truck a vehicle transporter parked in the parking lot full of all those beautiful cars every magnificent car imaginable was on that truck and Luke acknowledged that's law of attraction isn't it <laughs> that's law of attraction that truck wasn't there when they came in it came while they were there their impulse to talk about vehicles came from somewhere somebody's mixing up stuff in the vortex for the purpose of helping you to understand that your thoughts matter that your thoughts are heard that the things that you are interested are around you this is a universe that has the potential of giving you whatever you want whenever you want it you've just got to get yourself into that mindset of knowing that that is true and then those things that you formerly wanted to call coincidence and we do too we just mean something different by it we don't mean by luck or chance coincidence we mean cooperative incidents we mean the cooperative components of the universe all divinely designed to give you pleasure in this moment about something that's active within you in a way that you will realize it and recognize what's going on 
Deliberate creation with conscious awareness is so delicious and creating by default is a rough ride. Fault is a rough ride. Fault is a 